Yeah, we were in uh, Pasadena. Wow. And had some words spoken to us by a prophet. They were so sweet and they're so delicious. The soul. There is just a new, a new breed of prophets yeah. out there. He, he said the word affection like five times in the first five minutes. And he says, we're, we're just going to adore you. We're just going to adore. Let's just have a few moments of adoration. You know, and he, but he used these affectionate words and I, I, yeah, marvelous. Or we're, we're in the company of marvelous comrades. You know, and, and you know, sometimes you go kind of, okay, the prophets are in the house, they're going to read your mail. So duck right now, you know, like, pretend you're deep in prayer or something and then he can't, he can't, like, single you out, you know. But this was, it was so sweet. It was so sweet, delicious sweet. I came away from, I came away, my head was spinning. He, he, he said things that like nobody could know. Nobody could know. And I, I looked at him several times, I go, who have you been talking to? Who have you been talking to? <laughs> yeah, I know, it was so sweet. And I came away feeling like the father was just hovering over us. He just wanted us to feel that intimate hovering over. That was the office of this prophet. I was like, this, this, is, this is amazing. There was no sense of fear, no sense of exposing. He's going to read your mail in front of everybody. Yeah, there's a new day. There's a new wave. And he said things like, he said, he said, okay, if someone, you know, tells you, thus says the Lord. He said, uh, could I ask you, what, 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 what was the father's look on his face when he said this word? What did he look like? Oh, we haven't thought about what he looked like, because he just sounds mad, you know? Yeah, no, there's a new day coming. I just want to declare it. I just want to declare. It's a new day. The prophetic should not fear, we should not be terrorized or not be afraid of the prophetic. The prophetic should give us great insight into the intimacies of our Heavenly Father. How intimately acquainted He is with all of our ways. <laughs> and how He delights in us. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> Wow. So, and I want to read something here. This is, let your loins be gird and your lamps burning. Burn the oil. Burn the oil. Burn the Holy Ghost oil. Burn it up. Burn it up. Let it burn. Don't be conservative. In a day like this, let it burn. And you like and be like men waiting for their Lord when he shall return out of the wedding feast and that he having come and knocked immediately they were to open to him. Happy those servants whom the Lord having come shall find watching. Verily I say to you that he will gird himself and he will cause them to recline at meat or at the table and he, having come near, will minister to them. Happy. You should be happy. You should be happy, servants. And, and he goes on to say, who cares what, if he comes in the second watch or the third, who cares? What's it to you? You should be happy in burning the oil. Burn it up, burn it up. We're waiting, burning it up. I looked this word watching. You know, and there's like several meetings. Of course, we immediately go, well, we're, you know, we have to watch and watch and pray. And we're watching for the enemy. And we're watching like this. And I hope someone's on the tower tonight watching, guarding this place, you know. 
I'm like, well, that's one option, but I would like to go with another option. Uh, like this. They were up, went up to the Mount of Transfiguration, and the boys fell asleep. The three that were in special ops training, the three main, you know, special ops, <laughs> fell asleep. <laughs> and he woke them up, and he says, hey, pay attention. Watch. Hey, look at something. There's something to watch. There's something to look at. So I just wonder what it is we're looking at. Are we looking for the enemy or are we looking at him? Watch. You'll be happy if he returns and you're watching. And the immediate response, the immediate response to hosting his presence. Immediate, he shows up, yes! Wow! We're not surprised, we're not going, oh, oh, strange, how could that person over there shaking and jerking and going like that? How could that person go like, <laughs> See, that person has immediately opened to the Holy One. And this Lord of ours has come near. He's girded himself. He's come near to scandalously serve you. Yes. To cause you to sit at the table, to recline, to rest. He's causing you to rest, and he's serving you. This is this is this is um, strange behavior. It is scandalous. It's not the behavior of a lord of a house. He doesn't come and serve the servants. They're supposed to serve him. But something is turned here. Something is turned. He's serving you. If you let him, you must let him. That's the difficult part. You must let him serve you. This food. He wants you to recline. He wants you to eat something. He wants you to eat your fill. Oh, I just saw this the other day. I liked the language. Happy servants. <laughs> I'm burning something, I'm burning, I'm burning. I mean, you know, I just got an endless supply. I don't know what else to do with it. What should we do? Burn it up. Burn. Endless supply. Endless supply. These, these kind of things must affect us. This language of the scripture must affect us. When we read it from a viewpoint, it says Christ is the one that served us. Christ the servant, God's servant. He came to serve humanity. We need to boast in the ways he served us. I believe that's humility. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. It is scandalous. He used his servant body. Here's, here's a verse out of the message Bible. He used his servant body to carry our sins to the cross. Wow! <laughs> he used his servant body to carry our sins to the cross so we would be free from sin. Set free. 
from the evil, set free from wickedness. Ah, come on. Has Christ served you that way? Have you let him serve you that way? Oh my, my. When you read the Bible and you go, you're, you're faced with what he's done. He's not hiding. He's not concealing what he's done anymore. I believe we just can't see it clearly. Our eyes are just clouded up with our own, our own. What must we do? Our ministry, our, our, our. We're serving, we're doing, we're, you know. It, it, it cannot compare. It cannot be first place. He cannot take the stage. He can't take center stage. He occupies center stage. Yeah. And out of that, we, we respond. We, 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 are, we can't do anything else but respond. Like we're, we're drawn like a magnet to his greatness. He used his servant body to carry our sins to the cross so we would be free from sin free to live the right way. Ooh, happy, happy, happy. His wounds became our healing. Yes. My Jesus. Oh. Oh. Wow. I was born again in Santa Rosa, California. Yeah, these people had a crusade. I didn't know what a crusade was, but they had it, and I didn't even want to go to it. In fact, I remember saying, no, I'm not coming to your crusade. And Within a short hour, I found myself in a car on the way to their crusade. And I got there first, before anyone else got to the crusade. Because apparently the people driving me were like on the, the staff or something, or you know, they were the workers there getting the crusade ready. Oh. Well, I got ambushed. <laughs> I had a personal ambush that night. Oh yeah, a holy ghost snuck up behind me. Oh, oh! I didn't know it was the Holy Ghost, but now I do. <laughs> now I kind of get a little clear picture of what went on that night. I was in the back where I was supposed to be. Somehow I knew I was supposed to be in the back row. Back, back, far back. I didn't dare come up front. There in the back, I was ambushed. I, my ears were plugged. Like, I wasn't hearing the preacher or whatever he was doing up there. <laughs> I was looking at a piece of artwork, a face of Jesus. I am an artist and I do portraits. So face of Jesus was like, wow. And it was like my style, like I drew it. I'm like, wow, wow, where did that come from? Yeah. I mean, he had an artist draw it just for me. So somebody revealed who this Christ was, this Christ, this Jesus, all of a sudden came alive. And I felt his presence, I felt his love. So, at the appropriate moment, <laughs> somehow, you know, you just know these things instinctively. At the appropriate moment, I heard the call from the front of the building, those who mean business with Jesus, get up here right now. <laughs> 